subscribe to simplified biology channel and press the bell icon to get notified when a new video is uploaded hello friends welcome to simplified biology today's topic is leaf and its venation of the chapter morphology of flowering plants leaf is a lateral flattened structure as we can see in this diagram leaf is a lateral flattened structure that develops on the stem it develops on the stem it is formed from the shoot apical meristem the apical meristem of the shoot takes part in the formation of the leaf and the leaves develop in acropetal succession acropetal succession means the lower leaf is the older one and the upper leaf is the younger one it always has an axillary bud in its axil bud is an underdeveloped shoot and axil is the region between the leaf and the stem this part is the axil and this is the axillary bud which later grows into the branch so leaf is a lateral flattened part of the plant it develops on the stem at the nodes it is formed from the shoot apical meristem it develops in acropetal succession that is the lower one is the older one and the upper one is the younger one it has axillary buds in its axil from which develop the branches function of the leaf is it takes part in photosynthesis by the process by which food is synthesized and also takes part in transpiration leaf can be divided into three parts leaf base means the region by which the leaf gets attached to the stem it is also referred as hypopodium next is the petiole the mesopodium this is the stalk of the leaf and lamina the upper expanded part of the leaf which is also referred as epipodium leaf base is the part of the leaf by which it gets attached to the stem now the leaf base is pulvinous means it is swollen up in case of leguminous plants the plants that carry out nitrogen fixation so pulvinous leaf base is the characteristic of fabi family fabaceae in monocots a sheathing leaf base is seen means the leaf base is expanded and it partially or wholly covers the stem the leaf base is expanded and it partially means either half or completely covers the stem or clasps the stem stipules these are lateral appendages present at the leaf base these are the lateral appendages present at the leaf base in most dicots 
leaves having stipules are known as stipulate while leaves without stipules are known as extipulate in case of family fabaceae stipulate condition is seen while in case of family solanaceae and liliaceae extipulate condition is seen now these stipules are of various types they are either leaf like or modified into tendril or modified into spine or they are completely fused with the leaf base so this is a stipule seen in case of the rose leaf this is also a stipule petiole it is the stalk of the leaf it holds the leaf blade or the lamina in light or in wind leaves having petiole this is the stalk of the leaf the petiole leaf having petiole are known as petiolate while leaves without any petiole as you can see in this case are known as sessile without petiole is sessile and having petiole is petiolate in iconia that is water hyacinth the leaf or the petiole is swollen up the petiole is swollen up in case of iconia lamina or the leaf blade it is the upper expanded part of the leaf it is of various shapes and sizes this is the lamina the margin this is the leaf margin which differs in different leaves the leaf apex present in the lamina are veins and veinlets they provide rigidity to the leaf they help in transport of water minerals and food as vascular bundles are found present in the veins vascular bundles that is xylem and phloem are found present in the veins that is why they help in transport of water minerals and food and they also provide rigidity to the leaf next venation venation is arrangement of veins and vein lengths in the lamina now this is of two types reticulate and parallel now in case of reticulate venation the veins and veinlets or the veins break up into smaller veinlets that form a reticulum or a network throughout the leaf this is seen in most dicots in some monocots like smilax parallel venation in this the veinlets or the veins are parallelly arranged they do not form a reticulum or a network this is seen in most monocots and in dicots like calophyllum reticulate venation can be divided into two types pinnate and palmate in case of pinnate there is a single principal vein or the midrib from which develop the veins and veinlets that form a network throughout the lamina while in case of palmate there are more 
then one principal veins or distinct veins like midrib are more than one. Palmate is further divided into two types, convergent and divergent. Pinnate is also known as unicoste, means a single main vein is present, while palmate is known as multicoste, that is more than one main veins are present. Now, this is pinnate reticulate venation, where there is a single distinct midrib from which develop veins and veinlets that form a network in the lamina and these are examples of palmate. These two are palmate convergent means the many vein veins develop from the lower part of the lamina and they converge at the leaf apex these main veins they then converge at the main apex even in this we can see that there are many vein veins they arise from the base of the lamina and they converge at the apex so this is palmate convergent while in this case it is palmate divergent it means there are many vein, main veins developing from the base of the lamina which diverge in all directions. So, reticulate venation example is mango, guava, while palmate convergent example is cinnamon, smilax, while palmate divergent example is Cucurbita and grapes. Pinnate, reticulate pinnate can be seen in mango and guava. Reticulate palmate convergent can be seen in cinnamon and smilax. This is smilax. And reticulate palmate divergent can be seen in cucurbita and in grapes. Reticulate venation is seen in family. Fabaceae and Solanaceae. Just like reticulate venation, parallel venation can also be divided into two types. Parallel pinnate means there is a single distinct main vein or midrib while the other veins are parallelly arranged and palmate means more than one main veins are present. This is further divided into two types as in reticulate ven venation that is convergent and divergent. Pinnate is unicoste. while palmate is multicoste. Now this is parallel pinnate where a single distinct midrib is seen while the other veins that arise from it are parallelly arranged. This is seen in case of banana and in this is palmate convergent means there are many main veins that there are uh, formed from the base of the lamina and they converge at the leaf apex. Example grasses, sugarcane, bamboo. Now 
Now this is diapamid divergent where there are many main veins arising from the base of the lamina diverging in all directions. Seen in case of palmera palm also known as hand palm. So pinnate parallel venation is seen in banana and kana. Palmate convergent is seen in grasses, sugarcane, bamboo. Palmate divergent is seen in case of palmera palm. And parallel venation is seen in family Liliaceae. So remember stipulate is seen in family Fabaceae. X stipulate is seen in Solanaceae and Liliaceae. Petiolate is seen in both Fabaceae and Solanaceae. While sessile leaves are seen in Liliaceae. Reticulate venation is seen in both Fabaceae and Solanaceae. While parallel is seen in Liliaceae. Smilex is an example of family Liliaceae which shows reticulate venation. That's all for today. Please do like, subscribe, comment and also visit our website by clicking on the link given below. Thank you. Thank you for watching.